I'm at my mom's house so that my sister can have a little vacation away. And you know, elder care is really a lot of work. I'm always humbled by how much there is to do. So right now I'm going to unload the dishwasher, so come on with me. sleeping so and she doesn't hear good without a hearing aid so I can do this while she's sleeping so um, one thing I did while I was here at my mom is there was a bunch of grease on her um, oh hood range top and I thought I'm gonna be a great daughter and I'm gonna clean off all that grease so I looked online it said put baking soda on it and I did and guess what? The grease came off, but the grease was so adhered to the paint, it came off too. And my mom has a handyman. We'll probably get him to replace the vent. But I'll show you what I did. So if you're like me, all you can do is see the mistake. So what I did was I got a little contact paper, and it's not attached. And I just put it up there with magnets. My mom doesn't cook that much, and I don't think it'll get that hot. My sister said, you know, Irene, I'm doing a great job, and she is, but I don't like to dust. So while I'm giving my sister a two-week vacation, I'm also giving her a two-week vacation from dusting. My mother's been feather dusting, and I've been doing the heavy dusting. This is in a part of Texas where they get dust storms, and it's on the doors and the window frames. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. We didn't just do work when I was there. One Sunday, we went for a drive. My mother wanted to see the new memorial for the shooting of the people at Walmart on August 3rd. And it was a nice memorial, but the negative was there was no parking near it. So I had to park across the street at a nursing home and leave my mother in the car. It was hot, so we had to leave the car running with the air conditioning while I filmed the memorial. And then all my mom could do was watch the video. And I think that's a real shame to have memorials that are not accessible by people with disabilities or the elderly. It's a beautiful memorial. This is a park across from the Walmart and I think they took the people here, the survivors here as a staging area and it's just a corner of an existing park but I think they should have taken maybe a little bit more from the park and made like four parking spaces. That's just my little rant. Other than that I thought the memorial was beautiful. After we went to this new memorial, we went to the one that Walmart did. Uh, Walmart did not close the store where the shooting occurred, but they made their own memorial, and it's good and it's bad. I mean, I think it's good to memorialize it. I always ask, what would Costco do if there had been a shooting at a Costco? What kind of memorial would they do? Would they keep the store open? They call this the Grand Condolara, and I think it's made up of candles, like each candle represents a person that was shot and killed. To me, from the freeway, it looks like a trash can, and up close, it looks like the barrel of a gun, and I think that's the wrong kind of Memorial. It's also just jammed in the back of the Walmart parking lot. I think they could have done better. Good morning. It's Labor Day and I'm here in El Paso and I'm taking care of my mom for two weeks while my sister goes on a little vacation, a much needed vacation. And I thought on this Labor Day I would talk about some of the things that I struggle with 
when I come to help take care of my mom and anybody who does elder care or takes care of children probably is saying, gosh, I already know all this stuff, but for me it's new. And I guess the biggest thing is, for me, loss of self. And when I get up in the morning, I get up kind of early, and this alone time while my mom's still sleeping is the only time I have for me. And normally my me time is like going for a bike ride or going hiking or maybe playing golf or working in my yard or something. And when I don't like the way that makes me feel, I start doing chores. And so then when my mom gets up, the whole day becomes about her and there's no time left for me and at around 8.30 or 9 at night, I'm just exhausted. One of the things that um, came to mind right away is how much my sister, my life, and my mother's life changed. My sister is doing all the heavy lifting. I've realized that I need to come more often to give my sister breaks. This is really hard taking care of my mom. So the, that was the first thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, which is how much everything changed for my sister, myself, and my mom really quick, and how this last year has been trying to cobble together new lives for all of us. And um, so I'll talk about some of the good my sister has given my mom excellent physical care. I mean, my mom, I think in some ways, is healthier now than she was before the episode. She's less dependent, but I think maybe her overall health might be just a hair better. My mom is a real fighter, and she does her PT, and she wants to get strong. She would like to be able to do more for herself, and so that's really good. And for me, I think the best thing is, even though I'm still a fix-it and I try to jump in and fix everything, I've really realized that I can't. It's simple things like the way you load a dishwasher. Everybody does it different. And if you're rigid and it has to be done a certain way, it makes it hard on you. If you're the rigid, like if you have rigid rules about how you load your dishwasher, I think that's really hard, especially if somebody wants to help because they're not going to do it the same way. And the bottom line is it doesn't really matter, right? But these are things we fight with each other about. And my mother wants to do her, the laundry, like start the washing machine and everything, but turning the knobs is hard for her, so she needs help. Where the laundry soap is stored, um, she needs help getting it down. So to have her feel like she does the laundry, you kind of have to help. And so I can understand why it's easier just to do it yourself. Now, could we put all the soap down and everything so she could get it? Yep, but she can't turn the knobs. And I asked about why she needs to turn this one knob, and she said, well, reason one, reason two, reason three, which are all good reasons, but they're kind of rigid and make it hard to have her do it all by herself. And some things are just easier and faster to do yourself. And so it's like, on one hand, should I ha have mom do it so she feels like she's contributing? Or should I just do it so I get it over with, it's faster and I have more time to do other things? That's kind of what I think is the bad. Um, and learning to work with others and give of yourself but not lose yourself, I think that's the bad. It's really a hard thing. Um, make sure that your to-do list makes sense. Like, I come up with these incredible to-dos and it's like, does it really need to happen? Um, so. Every day now I've been kind of evaluating the to-do list, like, is that really something I need to do? And then on that same vein, 
Um, don't try to do too much because you never know what all is going to happen in the day. And if you do too much, you're too tired by the end of the day and you're not your best self. That's happened to me. I've only been here a week and I think it's happened on two days since I've been here. I kind of feel like I've done a big workout, like my back hurts. I feel sore. I'm tired. And really, I do more when I'm at home than I do here. But I think it's just the whole weight of it all. This is going to probably sound like whining and I don't want it to. Um, let me have some coffee. Oh, my mother wants to drive, go on a drive to Old Messiah, and that'll be fun. It might be kind of busy, and I don't know how much we'll be able to get out of the car, but maybe a little bit. And thanks for letting me rant about elder care. We're all in this together, right? I'm making my coffee and I'm using my iPhone because I'm too freaking lazy to get the other phone out. And when I retire, I need to start drinking less coffee because I drink a lot. But we're making decaf because that's all mom can drink. Let me just use cheap coffee. I like cheap coffee. If I could have cheap coffee or Starbucks, I'd pick cheap coffee every time. We went on a lot of other outings. We saw a new church my mother wanted to see. But mostly we sat around and visited and just shared. And it's kind of like all these beautiful hummingbirds my mother has around her house. They were just little pearls and good times and stories she shared about her mother. 
and we did a lot that I didn't film because it was so fun just to be with my mom and enjoy her as she enjoyed me. And this is a picture of me as a kid. Thought I would throw that in there. It was time to leave and at the El Paso airport they had a um, museum sharing exhibit from Mexico. I liked it. Um, they were all decorated dogs. You could buy them. I didn't really see anything I had to buy, but I thought they were cool. The El Paso airport is pretty, and they always have cool things on display to look at that helps you pass the time as you wait for your flight. On the airplane, I watched the latest color purple. It was really good, and Karen and I even rented it when we got back, and I watched it again. It made the flight go really fast. When I got home, I decided to slow down once I got to work and enjoy the beauty around work at lunchtime.